I got a question. At what point in life do you think it becomes necessary to carry coffee out each morning? Is it we're getting old, or we have children, or both? But it's kind of like my pacifier now. I just can't go without it. Which one do you think it is? Or I think both? it's both. Like if, if I don't have the coffee cup with me first thing in the morning, it's just, I kind of I kind of know a little bit maybe how smokers feel if you left your cigarettes at home, maybe. Okay. Does it feel like that to you? I kind of feel like I don't have my pants on if I don't have my coffee. We're glad you got both. Okay. <laughs> it's about day three or four, I think. Mix a catch out in the middle of it. A couple of days of cutting hay, fluffing hay. Here we are, we got a new piece of equipment to show you guys that we're trying out. It is a Coon GA6501. This is a rotary style rake. So we always use a V-rake, but we do a lot of high moisture hay and the V-rake's bad about dragging that hay instead of rolling it. I have zero experience with this style rake, but I have good friends that run it. Um, my friend Adam that has one, I have all the confidence in the world of him. He says it does a fantastic job. So here it is. We're gonna try this rake out and see. Um, supposedly, the rotary rake will do a lot better job of fluffing that hay up. We'll kind of show you guys, you'll learn along with us. We know absolutely nothing about this rake, but we're about to find out. So leave your, if you guys have experience with it, leave some comments. I think it's really going to help us on the haylage game, do obviously a good job in the dry hay. And we've got probably 65, 70 acres of hay on the ground, and that's a pretty tough feat with three people trying to accomplish that before it dries out. So y'all come along with us. Hopefully this isn't a disaster. If it is a disaster, you guys get to laugh at us. So here we go. It kind of looks like something you'd see at a carnival. Yeah. Hey, if nothing else, we can turn it on and I can just sling you around. Yeah. Donor. It's quite a contraption you got there. Call it the traveling Ferris wheel. Looks like something that's going to make cotton candy, doesn't it? You think you know how to run this thing? Yeah, you just turn the PTO on. And just leave it up like that and stir the air up. I need that going down the road and you just turn it on and it keep all the limbs back off the road. I'm ready to rake a little bit, get first impressions, good or bad. So the way this is set from the factory is, well, I say from the factory, the guys that put it together for us. There are settings up here for a windrow space and we are set on a four foot windrow, so we may have to adjust as we go. It is supposedly set right on the height off the ground. We'll have to go back and see. It's a two point hookup. We could not find that they made one with a draw bar hook. And these chains here are basically to restrict if someone let the arms down to keep this front end from going down too far. So that's the uh, that's the hookup as Coon implements usually have heavy duty. We like Coon. Uh, Crone had an option as well. I, I think Crone makes amazing equipment. Wouldn't be against uh, owning something. It just, uh, Coon has always worked for us, so why go different? We would like to thank Bannister Tractor for sure because this rake was sitting in a crate this weekend and we told them we needed it. They said it usually takes two days to put something like this together and they got it done for us. So definitely would like to thank Bannister. Uh, Vic and the guys over there always do us a good job for getting this out to us so hopefully we'll get some uh some positive results out of it but we'll show you e either way whether it's good or bad hydraulics the right way yeah. 
basically this thing has fluffer teeth on it it's the same thing as just longer fluffer teeth hey don't screw anything up no pressure thank you Guys, we've never rolled a windrow like that. Not with a V-rake, it's not possible. It fluffs that hay up and sits that in the windrow like it's supposed to be. And the faster bend runs, I'm sure the better, but wow, what a job. And some of this, look guys, it didn't get a, and I'll show you one of these other fields where I got a real close, I got a perfect cut. This cut is awful. And I may need to do a video later and show you guys, but We've had a conditioner, a coon conditioner for years, and it was set at the factory, and we never really adjusted that height. Now we've readjusted the height, and it cuts like a lawnmower. And it's common sense, but it's just one of those things you gotta do. What do you think? Oh, it looks great, it looks. We never have been it, able to roll like that with a V-rate, have No, we? no. It's how long great. have you been bailing hay? I don't even, how old am I? <laughs> You've been bailing hay for what, 50 years? Yeah. yeah Have you ever seen a windrow like that? No, it's, it's not, at, not at the moisture that this is at. Yeah. This is something you don't play with with a regular rake. Yeah, that's the main thing is a uh, high moisture like that with a V rake, you just drag it, you can't. Because well, Daddy just checked the moisture, and what is the moisture right there where he just rake? It, it's running around 58 down to about 49. Okay. But, but so, the thing about it, that, that hay is so heavy right now, you. You have to either run really slow with a regular rake or and you'll wind up skipping a lot because it's so heavy it won't pick it up right. And you're still dragging the right. hay where it's like I tried to explain like a wet mop so it's rough on the baler because it sucks chunks in there. Right, this flips it up, what I like about it, flips it up to where the air can get in it and it can be drying all times the wind row. I don't, I don't think you can get a long way ahead of this unit. Yeah. What he's saying there is, this is going to dry in the wind row a lot faster, obviously, than the V-rake. So, you know, you, a lot of times in a V-rake, the person on the rake will just haul tail and just rake the whole farm and the balers come behind. This may be a little bit of a learning curve for us because if we run two, if we have two balers here, you know, we may can stay up with him pretty good. Um, but this hay may dry a little too quick if we get too much ahead of us rate. We are going to bale these bales and set it 60 inches. We're gonna start at like a 52 because we're high moisture and just see what these things weigh. Normally we bale a 60 inch bale but I want to see, bail a few, see what it feels like. We may go up in size. We won't go down in size. Let's go. Please let us have a good day. Please, Lord. Let's see what the first bail looks like. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. She's green. Net wrap looks good. Oh, Lord, that thing's heavy. That's a 52 inch bale and uh, she's heavy, folks. If that dry, hay gets too dry, you see mold. Gosh, this stuff's gonna be cow candy. I wish I could bottle this smell up and let you guys smell of it. 
Should be a, one of those uh, car air fresheners. Halage. What do you think so far? Good so far. We are rocking and rolling in the hay field. Eric's jumped over, he is raking for us, trying out the new rake. I swapped with him, got in the cab tractor with the AC. And Eric's dad just got here with our other tractor and baler. So we are now running two balers, one rake, moving right along. So far, I believe we built about 72 or 73 bales this tractor today Steve has done a few not sure how many Let's see if I can dump one out without sending it in the woods or rolling down a hill or wherever else. Check my mirrors. Don't see it. There it is. Ready to roll. nervous I looked down there so the two net wrap bells are the ones I did and this one I thought man did I dump a bell out with no net wrap on it but our other baler just wraps twine I'm pretty sure that's a twine bell yep it had twine on it we're good you'll check out Eric up there breaking along He's been talking about one of these rakes for two years. Finally got us one. Eric's the professional bailing hay. He's got a lot more rolls in than I do, but gotta learn somehow. That right there is what usually happens when I get on the baler. That wasn't me today though. We got two Steves out here. One of them's Eric's dad, one of them's another guy who helps us out. He's over there. Once we get these bells bailed, he's toting them up there. That way, when we bring the truck, we're not running all over the field. Well, Steve O's a lifesaver. That's a twine bale, so you can see there's a difference in how long it takes wrapping those up in twine versus uh, doing the net wrap like I'm doing. Doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you're doing 250 bales and you're trying to beat the rain or just make it home for supper, it can definitely make a difference. That's a wrap on field one. Hopping back in the tractor, heading down the road, field two.
tractor was getting a little bit warm, so clean the screens out on the radiator. close to finishing baling for today got a lot more bale than we thought we would this is the part of the pasture that we've been fencing in you can see some of our fence we built over here so all this that you see that we have just baled will be we must have cows on it before long there's another part of this that we're going to cut and probably dry that hay out it's got a lot more fescue in it this is a lot more ryegrass I believe we'll try and dry it out if we get good weather but once we get all this cut for the first time and hang a few gates we're we'll putting some cows in here Day one of baling hay is over. We actually baled everything. Did not expect to get all that much done, but I think it was about 275 bales. All of it baled. So we'll start early in the morning hauling it, getting our new wrapper out, start wrapping it, and we'll be good to go. Thank y'all for watching our video. Hope y'all enjoyed our hay cutting video. Be sure and tune in because I know tomorrow we'll be doing another video all about hauling and wrapping it. So thank y'all. Have a good one.